it's a rat. Do you need someone to care for? Said the older to the younger giraffe. If it takes the sun and the rain to make a tree grow, if it takes the moon and the tide to make the sea flow. The moon and the tide to make the sea flow. But uh, what does it take to love a child? Love a child. To start with a smile and after a while a hug and a kiss. It takes no more than this to love a child. To love a child To love a child To love a child Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, Frank. Yes. I Thank did. you. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. Also, um, I want to thank the DC Children's Chorus and Donna Nika Costa and Johnny Grant. All of you. I'd like you to. I. I, I know it's been said. Uh, earlier, but you do know that all the royalties from the book um, and this record that you just heard go to the Foster Grandparent Program. Everything. <laughs> now I'd like to officially welcome you all to the White House. I hope you've had a good time. I really don't think these grounds have ever, have ever held so much tenderness and, and affection. But then that really shouldn't be so much of a surprise because all of us know that the foster grandparents foster love. Some of you have probably read the book Peter Pan to your children or grandchildren. The man who wrote that book, Sir James Barry, once said that something that I believe really captures the spirit and the heart of the foster grandparents. Perhaps it should even be your motto. But he said, those who bring sunshine to the lives of others can't keep it from themselves. 
and I think that describes the foster grandparents perfectly. And while there are thousands of stories to tell, and we really had a hard time with the book because there are so many stories to tell, let me tell you about one of the grandparents in the book, Grandma Ruby. She lost her husband, and she was virtually just paralyzed with grief. She lost 20 pounds, she couldn't eat, she didn't know how to write a check because Peter had always done all of that. Her, her, whole, her whole life was disintegrating. And one day, she looked at Peter's old leather chair and she put her head down in, in the seat of the chair and she said, dear God, please let me die or else give me a reason to live. Well, Grandma Ruby found that reason in her work with the young girls who'd been molested. Letters from girls and women. She's, she's, she's written me and she said that she's gotten letters from girls and women all over the country thanking her for her work and also asking prayers and help for the lives that are still hurting. She says, God has surely blessed me and is giving me much to do in my old age. But what amounts to a, a little P.S., she wrote, I really am a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> well, she may be a late bloomer, but she's blossomed into a beautiful rose of love and compassion. So have all of you foster grandparents. On any given day now, there are over 18,000 grandparents loving 54,000 children who have disabilities of one kind or another, or children who've been abused or neglected. Right now, you can bet there's a foster grandparent somewhere with their arms around a little child who needs that special love and affection. You know, we've been together, as Johnny was saying, we've been together so long that watching this program grow, it's really like watching your child grow. I'm so proud of you. I really am of all that you've done and all that you give. I'm proud to be associated with you and it means a great deal to me to have you here today. I wish we could form a big receiving line so that I could give each one of you a great big hug. But even though you may not be mentioned in the book, it is about each one of you and it's about your open-hearted love. Thank you for caring, and thank you for, for coming. I really love having you. You know, I forgot something. In, in, my, in my thank yous, I really, should, I really should thank two other people who are a big part of this. Uh, when we were talking about the book and the record, Hal David and Joe Raposo, also should be thanked for donating their yeah, yeah. services. There's another thing that you all can do today. Each one of you can leave the White House and go out all across America and say, I sang with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> now that's a credit, let me tell you. And you can sing with him again now and with Mrs. Reagan as they lead us in America the Beautiful.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, could I clear a, a way here now? We, uh, you know, we, we are kind of full in here, and I, I need your help on this very much. Let me clear a little alleyway here, and uh, Mr. Sinatra is going to be gracious enough to escort our first lady out of the tent. And give them both a great big round of applause. Let everybody connected with this know how much you enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. Please do. There you go. That's great. Go, kids. Aren't they cute? How about these little ones? And I know you'll want to give a great big hand for our great United States Marine Corps Band.